this particular system is crossed over at one kilohertz. That's one advantage of these little wide range drivers that have relatively, these particular drivers have excursions of something on the order of plus or minus one millimeter with a mechanical limit of about plus or minus two millimeters. So it's really a, you can talk about a, you know, a, a subwoofer version of a tweeter. And that allows this system to be crossed over about one kilohertz. Now at one kilohertz, the, the mid-range to tweeter spacing is quite small with respect to wavelength. So this system has a, also has an extremely uniform horizontal coverage. Now one thing, one distinct difference between a straight line array polar pattern and a curved arc array is this. This has a very distinctive horizontal coverage. This is, a, again, a freestanding array, not a ground plane array. But if you look at the polar pattern that this exhibits, it exhibits a, a cosine law, whereas the vertical coverage of this array is a function of its horizontal angle. So this array actually is widest in the front and narrows down as you go to 90 degrees, something like that. So this is unlike a straight line array, which essentially has the same coverage all the way around. Now when you take this and cut it in half and put it on the floor, you might say, where, where is the on? I mean, previously, the on axis is right here in the center. That's where the maximum level is. Now you cut it in half and put it on the floor. Where, where, where now is the on axis point? I mean, in effect, I mean, actually, it's grazing the floor. It's down at floor level. And that's, that, that, that's very strange in comparison to standard speakers. But the other, uh, you know, then I, this shows the, the level decreases as a function of height. But what you gain by this arrangement of speakers and shadings in this circular arc is you end up with an, an incredibly uniform vertical coverage. And when you talk about, if a loudspeaker reviewer were to review one of these things, they, they always ask, the designer, where's the on axis? Where, where do I sort of get the best frequency response? Now for this one, it's, it's kind of indeterminate because you get, a good, you get a good curve if your microphone is on the reflective surface or up here or even up here or anywhere in between and up close. Now the other advantage of this that I mentioned about the, this is in effect not having a near field is the fact the, if you listen to this up close, or take your, you, 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 you might have a test microphone with your real-time analyzer and put it up close. It, it, it has a flat response for points very close to the array, including all the way down to the floor or anywhere in between. I mean, you can just raise it up. So we're, we are, we're preparing, preparing a series of additional YouTube videos we have with uh, me holding the microphone and a real-time analyzer, and we're going to be comparing a, uh, a standard three-way system with woofer mid-range and tweeter with one of these devices, and you know, show, taking the microphone physically and seeing how it varies as a function of distance and height and uh, near the surface. But this, in fact, really does sound good, just you know, with your near with your ear very close to the system. So that, that's one advantage. The other, when I was mentioning the sound field generated by a straight line array is, does have a near field and it's somewhat non-uniform and chaotic at points near the array. So usually a, a straight line array, you can't get a good near field curve out of it. But with this, with this technology, you can. Now remember, a few minutes ago I stated that the vertical polar pattern of this device <clears throat> is a function of the horizontal angle, i.e. it's wide directly ahead and then gets narrow as you go down to the sides. Now that's completely unlike any other speaker. Now what does that mean? That means that the, this particular system has been designed to be wideband constant directivity or wideband constant coverage. And this particular system maintains its vertical beam width down to about 150 hertz. In other words, above 150 hertz, it has extremely uniform coverage. So this means that as, you, as you're walking around this to the side, the, the volume actually goes down as you walk around the side because 
you're at least at, at, at standing height because you're depending upon the, each, each of these individual loudspeakers that make up the array are reaching you with different timings. And this also means that if you listen to this in front of the array and you go from floor level up, the level changes there also. It's actually maximum down at floor level, which is completely different than the way normal speakers behave. Now one thing that is very unique about the ground plane version of this is if you, let me, let me, let me go back to this ground plane with this the ground. If you plot the sound level or sound pressure level as a function of distance at a certain height, as an example on this one, if you do it roughly, say at standing height, where your ear is roughly at this level, and you look at how the sound pressure varies going out this way. Now traditional line arrays typically would have a sound roll off that would only go down or decrease 3 dB per doubling of distance. By that I mean if you if it has a certain sound pressure level at a certain distance and you double that distance, it drops 6 dB. I'm sorry, 3 dB. And conversely, a point source, because it's spherically expanding, it drops 6 dB per doubling of distance. And a typical line array is thought to exhibit a 3 dB per distance, per distance, uh, 3 dB per doubling of distance sound roll off. Now that's also true for this, except this is much more uniform as a function of frequency. Now, if you look at how the sound pressure drops off at a specific height, particularly heights out near the, the end of the array, which would either be you know, roughly going out a line this way or this way, or a ground plane going out this way, the sound pressure, you'll note that when you're here, when you're fairly close to the array, you're very off axis, meaning off axis if you extend this center of the arc, which is somewhere back here, you're, you're in effect off axis where the level is down. And as you proceed from near points to far points, you become more and more on axis. Now, magically, that means that for these kinds of arrays, it essentially compensates for the near far sound pressure variation. And as I'm going to show in some of the next YouTube videos when I have a real time with a microphone, you can actually stand up to this array and you know, listen to it at this point and just simply walk away from it and the sound pressure doesn't change. It's a, I mean, it's, 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 it's a situation that's completely different than a standard speaker. Or you can listen to it loud, loud back there and as you walk up to it, it doesn't get louder. That's something that we're going to demonstrate too with the real time and the microphone. Now another nagging question is, is, remember I said that this is designed to operate on a reflective surface. By that I mean it's an acoustically reflective surface. Now here's the question, what if I put this in the living room and I've got a carpet on the floor, what does it do? Now we're going to be, after we get through with this uh, shoot that I'm doing right now, we're going to be doing some experiments with putting a rug on the floor I've done this actually before several years ago, but what I found was that the, because a rug is not a very good acoustic absorber on the floor particularly, in other words, it's mostly a decent absorber at high frequencies and not so much at mid and low. In fact, it hardly absorbs anything. So uh, my experience with that has been that a rug on the floor doesn't really change the unique coverage of this array except for points down near the floor where the ray, in effect the, the ray's on axis is grazing the floor.